Last time on the Dan Classic Show. You have 24 hours to send the money to my Swiss bank account or the embassy is as good as destroyed, capitalist pigs. Taking so long, Jesse! Start the car! Start the car! I'm doing the best I can, Gorilla. I'm not used to hot wiring cars. Ooh, a delicious LaCroix! An orange, my favorite! And someone's opened it for me, too! I'm sure there's no poison in it. I'm gonna go ahead and have a sip! It's poison! No! We should have shotguns for this type of deal. Oh! That's not LaCroix, that's La Poison! I think we've outrun for now. Oh my God, Jesse, are you okay? You're bleeding. I ain't got time to bleed. Your time is running out, heroes. Soon, the world will be mine. Ah! <laughs> Conclusion. Raz Holly hit the music. It's, it's almost like he's like a noodle. and we're still talking about Series 3 of the LJN Wrestling Superstars. And just so there's no funny business, I'll be right here to help, Gorilla. Come on, Jess, we both know that's not necessary. You owe me one, Gorilla, so let's get to the review. You know what? Whatever, fine, do what you want. Look at him, Gorilla, he's, uh, he's... Yeah, by 1986, Bruno was pretty much done in the ring. And unlike my broadcast partner here, Sam Martino didn't exactly fit into the 1980s rock and wrestling era. But any wrestling fan worth his or her, yes, any fan worth his or her salt knows that Sam Martino is no doubt one of the most important champions in the history of the sport and one of the most dominant. This guy was champion from 1963 to 1971, and again from 73 to 77. And Series 3 was almost a decade later, Gorilla. You're right, Jess. It's a strange addition to the line, considering some of the active members of the roster that never got the LJN treatment. Up next is the store brand Sergeant Slaughter, Corporal Kirchner. Mine is in pretty good shape. Ha <laughs> ha! But did you know that there was a variant of Yeah, a variant with a beard. Whoopee shit. Can we move on now? Anyway, here's a couple of all-time favorites of mine. The British Bulldogs. These guys were one of the most ass-kicking tag teams of all time. And take a look at them here. They pose great together, and those extended arms can clothesline the shit out of all your other figures. But I paid the fool.
is one of my very favorite wrestlers in the line. Ha 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 ha! Not only that, this guy's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the Macho Man Randy Savage. Oh yeah, the Macho Man looks awesome too. What a great sculpt. There's no mistaking who this figure is supposed to depict. And man, did they ever get it right. I've got two, one as he was sold and this one that I've customized for a SummerSlam 1988 look. <laughs> but did you know that there was a variant? Yes, a variant Savage with pink or purple trunks depending. Ooh, let the party begin. Is that all? Variants! Magnificent Don Morocco is up next with his t-shirt and Trump's combo. Jesus, okay, time out real quick. What is up with the t-shirt and trunks look? I get the fanny packs and I guess even the gaudy weightlifter pants. But when a grown man is walking around in trunks, boots, and a t-shirt, especially with no knee pads, it looks fucking ridiculous. Anyway, here's Morocco and all of his eight-year-old ready for bedtime glory. Put some goddamn pants on. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is up next. And could they cut cost a bit more on paint? Jeez, I know this is based on one of his actual ring gears, but for crying out loud, give him the red tights and the headband. Anyhow, mine's okay, but I won't mind giving him a bit of a custom paint job. Next up is Terry Funk, whose run with the WWF at the time was so short that it hardly warranted getting a figure in this line. However, I'm glad they did because Terry Funk is awesome and this figure is pretty cool. Mine's got some paint issues, and it's missing not only one, but two fucking accessories. A hat, and a goddamn branding iron. And I don't have to tell you that getting that shit won't be cheap either. But for now, I'm just glad I've got a Terry Funk in the first place. When are we getting to me, Gorilla? Soon, Jess. Hold tight. In fact, you want to take the next one? Of course I will, Gorilla. Up next is Chico Santana. Whoa, Jess. It's they on the Eco Chain! What do you mean? That's his name, Chico Santana. Now shut up and let me get to the review. Ahem, ahem, ahem. The views of Jesse Ventura are not necessarily those of the Dan Classic Show or its producers or Dan Classic. Please direct all complaints to Raz Holly. Thank you. Please direct all complaints to Raz Holly. Thank you. Really? Anywho, this is Chico Santana in all of his purple trunked glory. Oh, but just remember, there's variants. Yes, a variant. White trunks, strike force gear. Hooray. And look at this figure, Gino. He looks like he's had a long night out in Tijuana. Jesus Christ, Jesse! Would you be serious and just stick to the script? I threw it out. Why? Because... I got time to read. Anyway, up next is Special D. Jones. And what's the D stand for? Well, it stands for delivery, you pervert. And this one's got his Hawaiian shirt on. Uh? There's also a version with a red shirt as well. Uh. I don't even know why they gave this fat jobber a figure to begin with. His most notable achievement, if you can call it that, is getting his ass handed to him by King Kong Bundy in a squash match. Time of the fall, nine seconds. Well, if that's all it takes, why no Brooklyn Brawler? Or better yet, Barry Horowitz figures. Anyway, shirt, trunks, no knee pads, and the guy I brought it from pretended like it was some rare variant figure. It's not. So I guess that about wraps it up for now. Now wait just a goddamn minute. Just kidding. Finally, we've got Jussie the Body Ventura in all of his psychedelic glory. Mine looks pretty great. Aside from a little paint loss, I plan on grabbing another and doing a custom with tie-dye tights and a do-rag. And while we're on the body, Let's take a look at something I recently got from my good pal, Johnny Boxer. 
The LJN wrestling superstars were packed with a poster rolled up beneath the figure and a cutout file card on the back of the packaging. I've only got one pair, and it's for Jussie the Body Ventura. I love the artwork on these posters, and as a casual G.I. Joe collector as well, I'm a sucker for a file card. Unfortunately, in the later series, the illustrations on the posters were replaced by photographs of the wrestlers and weren't nearly as cool. Ha <laughs> ha! Great job, Gorilla. I didn't know you cared. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I still haven't told you about the Jesse the Body Ventura variants. Uh yeah, yeah, anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to hit subscribe, give me a like, leave a comment, all that stuff. Go ahead, check out my other videos. They're right here for you. We're going to have a whole lot more coming soon. But anyway, this is it for the Dan Classic Show for now. So Raz Holly, hit the music! So Raz Holly, hit the music! You're right. This fanboy seems to know more than me. Send him your complaints. Wait, 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 why me? Why me? I'm, I'm not part of the Dan Classic Show. I only know more than Dan Classic, that's all. Now will you play the music? Fuck you. I got time to read.